Most aircraft producing countries have had their fair share of out there planes. And Russia, or to be more accurate, the Soviet Union, certainly had quite a few that were Ah, motherland! But when it comes to the Belyav DBLK, well... I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue. Joking aside, the Belyev DBLK was a unique and rather interesting idea. An attempt to develop a high performance aircraft, its name in English means long range bomber flying wing. The aircraft's designer, Viktor Belyayev, which I'm almost certainly pronouncing wrong, worked on several Tupolev heavy bombers during the 1930s. He then moved into experimenting with twin boom designs. This ultimately evolved into his creating a transitional design that combined several features, merging a twin boom fuselage with a tailed flying wing concept. Oh, and the wings were swept forward as well, as if the rest of it wasn't enough. Originally conceived as a passenger transport, it was decided in 1938 to develop the concept as a potential high speed and long range bomber. The DBLK featured two fuselages which were actually more like elongated engine nacelles. These were joined by a solid wing structure, which had a tall single cruciform tail and housed the tail wheel. The airframe was of stressed skinned construction, while the wings were sheathed in aluminium alloy and the flaps had fabric coverings. The fuselage nacelles housed two crew each, a pilot and rear gunner in the left, the navigator and radio operator in the right. Both the gunner and the radio operator were seated in the rear of the nacelles, which due to their extensive glazing gave them excellent visibility. Each of these would apparently have been armed with two Chacasse 7.62mm machine guns in a rear and mid position. As these each would have a rate of fire of 1,800 rounds per minute, it was thought that any fighter that may have attacked a DBLK would have faced a considerable amount of defensive fire. Two additional machine guns would be fitted in the centre of the wing, providing the pilot with an offensive capability. Bomb load was anticipated to be 1,000 kilos, 2,200 pounds, as a standard load, and carried internally. Though it was considered that 2,000 kilos was possible carried externally should the aircraft have actually got into service. Initially, it was hoped to power the DBLK with two Tomansky M88 radial engines, which were in development at the time. However, issues with these meant that when the prototype was delivered in April 1940 to the Soviet Air Force Research Institute for testing, it used two M87B engines. These produced 950 horsepower each. Needless to say, the unconventional appearance of the DBLK drew a great deal of comment and interest from test pilots, technical staff and ground crews assigned to the Institute. However, testing proved unsuccessful, both due to bad luck and to flaws in the aircraft design. The Institute was at the time reconstructing its airfield and new strips were in use. Unfortunately, in one of its first taxi tests, the DBLK struck an unobserved stump that hadn't been cleared properly. This blew out a tyre, but was quickly repaired and testing resumed. The aircraft showed some alarming flare characteristics, no doubt the product of the huge wing area. Flight testing also showed that performance was not what was hoped for. Projected performance had been for a maximum speed of 340 miles per hour and a maximum range of almost 2,500 miles with a 1,000 kilo bomb load. But with the lower powered engines, the DBLK only managed a maximum speed of 303 miles per hour, unladen. This offered no real advantage over the existing designs in service with the Soviet Air Force at the time. In fact, the DBLK was in many ways considerably worse, even dangerous. While the prototype was able to be handled by the experienced test pilots, it was reported to have a high landing speed, long takeoff run, and have some erratic handling qualities. Much of this was attributed to the centre of gravity being towards the rear of the aircraft. Some modifications were made, mainly in the adding of lead ballast, but the test pilots also complained of some other significant faults. 
the rear positions and the navigator's area were extremely cramped to the extent that the crew manning the rear guns wouldn't have been effective. Both the pilot and the navigator had poor visibility and with the DBLK's flying characteristics it probably would have been a highly dangerous aircraft for inexperienced pilots. But perhaps worst of all was that the crew compartments tended to fill with exhaust fumes. And we are not talking about a bit of a whiff here. The concentration was so bad that a long flight would have had to be conducted wearing gas masks. For this reason, the ultimate range of the aircraft was never ascertained. And so, the DBLK was refused permission to continue development. A logical choice, considering that it did nothing better than the in-service aircraft, which performed without the need for bizarre flight characteristics or gas in the crew. But the design continued to interest the leadership of the Soviet Air Force, who later asked if the DBLK could be redesigned as a dive bomber. So a study was launched to examine this issue, which is somewhat odd as the Soviets at the time were fielding the PE-2 in the role, an outstandingly good aircraft. Again, nothing came of it and the DBLK vanished, apparently destroyed during the Second World War. But though it proved unsuccessful, the DBLK probably deserves to be better remembered. Very much a transitional design, the aircraft demonstrated several concepts that have since been developed and have proven extremely advantageous. But, as with so many ideas that occurred before their time, the technology of the day not only made the DBLK unsuccessful, but also something of a menace. Despite that, it is a rather intriguing forgotten aircraft. Hope you found all this of interest. If you're new to the channel, have a look around at some of the other oddities I've covered. Have a good one, and I'll catch you all again soon.